Mr. Gallagher, welcome. All right, Gary. And um, you're DJing uh, this evening as well. When did the DJing start for you? Um, 88, 89. And then I took a 15 year break because it was dance music and I don't like dance music. So what kind of stuff are you going to be uh, spinning this evening? Well, I'm in four different places, so I've got four different sets. So 50s rock and roll, 60s rock and roll, Northern Soul, Motown Scar, kind of a bit of like light funk, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's pretty green, the first club night, you know, um, you know, pretty green, the, um, the, the clothing um, brand. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, who would have been, you know, sort of your style reference points when you were growing up in Manchester and also for your brothers as well? Um, there was only one, one fella, Mr. Weller. I'm afraid that was, it was the 80s, wasn't it? And um, yeah, well, any time a jam had a single out, we'd get it in, you know, obviously, however many formats there was, coloured, just anything to do with the jam. I mean, some people went a bit crazy with the jam shoes. I didn't go that far, but I had a little two-tone suit, a little parker. Or, uh, I wouldn't have a Union Jack on, my dad would kill me, so one of them. And what jam. about, what about you know, the, the, the album that, that sort of changed your life? That's a question that I'm asking everyone this evening, because I, I love, that's always something that I love to uh, ask of people. We've all got one. I mean, if you had to, uh, you know, choose one for your good self, what takes you back to Burnage as a kid? Sound effects. Why? Because I must know that record off by heart. Every single lyric, every word. Just, I mean, you know, when, when you're a kid, you don't have much money, so you have enough money to buy one record a month. And you just play it to death, and that's what we did. And that's why I sound effects, yeah, Man in the Corner Shop. Great song. Top tune, top tune. Now, um, what about Pretty Green, you know, the, the, the clothing line as well? I mean, are there any, um, you know, specific sort of, um, you know, items that, uh, you know, are favourites of yours for whatever reason? Um, desert boots are pretty comfy. Um, T-shirts are all right. Yeah, you know, there's caters for everyone, so, yeah, he's doing all right. And what about, um, you know, BDI as well? I mean, they've just released this um, th th this kind of sort of taster uh, yeah. single. Um, you know, have you been in a position where, you know, you've heard, um, you know, some advanced stuff as far as the album is concerned? I mean, can you give us an idea of what people can expect? I mean, you know, can you compare it to Oasis in any way? I think people are very dismissive, you know. You, that BDI single, given away for free, people are like very critical and it's like, you haven't got a clue what's coming. I mean, I was, in the, I was fortunate to be in the studio when, when they were recording some of the stuff and um, yeah, it's, it's very, very different, very stonesy, bluesy, rocky, it's, it's everything, you know. It, it's, it's not the same as always because it couldn't be um, in an anthemic way, but there's still anthems there. It's just not Oasis and it's, nor, nor should it be. You know, this is, you know, different time, different band. All right, and what's in your um, box uh, this evening as far as uh, what you're going to be dropping? You know, what are going to be your big tunes? I don't have big tunes. I, I don't, you know, I'm not like a DJ that goes, right, well, I'm going to wait till the end of the night and put all these bombs in. There's bombs in, in every minute, you know? I'll play, well, I don't know. <laughs> Let me just think of something. Off the, so I, I, you know, because I play every day of my life, I just get like, oh, monotonous about it. I'll probably put a who on, kinks. Uh, Jody Johnson, um, Jesse James is like an old 50s rock and roll dude. Um, might put some old R's in. King, yeah, the Kings Who, well, you know, whatever. I mean, Stevie Wonder. Uh, Something for all the family, as they say. Th yeah, th there's a whole mishmash of stuff that goes into my box. There's a couple of bands that I'm playing this evening. Yeah. Um, Exit Calm, I know, are kind of friends and favourites of yours. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've, ne I've yet to hear them. I, I mean, I don't know whether people are, uh, you know, are watching this, uh, you know, are also, uh, you know, green to them, if, if you'll excuse the pun. What can we expect? I mean, it's, it's a great chance for them. I mean, it's, they're from Barnsley um, in Yorkshire. There's to be 600, 700 kids here tonight. I've never heard them for the first time. I mean, they're not a rock and roll band. They're a song-based band, they're, they're a bit deep, they're very loud. And they're, they're just a, a brilliant band, you know, it's a good album, it was out this year on their own little self-finance label. You know, I mean, I've got a little thing that, um, if anyone, I mean, people diss a lot of music these days, and, uh, and, it, and it's pretty unfair because there is no business. If anyone's putting out music, and they're predominantly losing money putting out music, then hats off to them, people should, like, back off, because soon there'll be no music. What are you going to do then? I mean, um, you know, one of the other questions that uh, I want to ask of uh, people is, um, you know, if I could take you back to uh, one gig in your past, um, you know, and you've obviously been to uh, some memorable ones, I would imagine, over the years. Is there any one that sort of sticks in your memory for whatever reason? Oh, an Oasis one. What, or, or, or anybody? Um, Stone Roses at International 2, because we didn't know what, what the fuck was going on. I mean, Ian Brown couldn't sing and he still can't sing, but it was just that movement of people. That Manchester finally had a band that 
everyone could get on. And that, that was a pretty, that was a sweaty night. And then uh, I seen the Lars at International One. And they, they in the, like, you know, late 80s, they were pretty good. And then there's obviously Oasis, I mean, there's countless number of gigs, I can't remember. Doubling the point always was good before they'd done it up. And um, yeah, it's just millions of them. The Buckley Tivoli, when Evan Dando decided to play a gig on the roof, that's quite memorable. Um, yeah, it's just loads of shows, and I just, you know. So All right, well, look, listen, thanks for sharing those with us, and uh, you've got a gig to do. Um, I believe so, now I need to know where, find out where I can smoke first before I uh, put a record on. Nice to see you, good lad, well done, you. Good boy. Right.